All right, how's it going, everyone? We are on day 14, path 24, Neon TL, or Nyan Tile, however you would like to say it. This is the path of Nun on the shadow side. Here is the image from the shadow tarot, if you'd like to screenshot that. Let's get started. I hope you're all having a good morning, afternoon, or evening whatever time it is there. Grab a pen and paper if you'd like, a bottle of water, a cup of tea or something. I'm having some blackberry tea. All right. The 24th tunnel is under the influence of Scorpio and sentineled by Neon Tiel, whose number is 160. The name of this clipper should be intoned in G lower register, in a manner suggested of a bubbling cauldron of molten lava. For Mars is the predominating planetary power. The sigil should be painted in lurid indigo brown, like a black beetle. See 777 revised, table 1, column 18. The sigil should be painted in lurid indigo brown like a black beetle on an equilateral triangle of greenish blue. The number 160 is that of Q-I-N, presumably Kof Yod Nun, the nucleus of impurity, mentioned in connection with the previous tunnel. It is also, okay, it is also the number of L-N-S-K, Lamed Nun Samik Kof, sorry, Chaf, for a drink offering, which indicates the sacrament associated with the formula of Neon TL. I'm going to stop translating into presumably Hebrew letters because it slows things down too much. It is also the number of LNSK for a drink offering, which indicates the sacrament associated with the formula of Neon TL, i.e. that of the ninth degree OTO. See note, page 205, Supra. But a lesser or subsidiary formula is implied by the name MNO-160, which means to restrain or keep back, implying the technique of Kareza. Other relevant concepts are Oats tree, the tree of life, and IQIM, a setter up from the Egyptian chem, meaning ithophallic, also I-P-H-O, he shone forth. From the Egyptian af, A-F, which denotes the sun and the lower hemisphere, see note, the solar phallic energy operating in Amenta, as exemplified in the formula of the ninth degree O-T-O. This idea is confirmed by the verse from 231, which reads, Also, Asar was hidden in Aminti, and the lords of time swept him with the sickle of death. The lords of time are represented in the tunnel of Neontiel by the infernal waters of Scorpio, which imply the alchemical formula of purification via putrefaction. The infernal waters are the nucleus of impurity, already explained. Hmm. Now I'm thinking about putrefaction and its relationship to fermentation and wine. Interesting, interesting. I digress. The infernal waters are the nucleus of impurity, already explained. They suggest the symbolism of the rainbow as the seal of the deluge. From the abyss of space. The number 160 is that of TZLM, an image, and this is depicted in the sigil of Neon Tiel as an image of death with a five rayed crown bearing a cross handled scythe beside the cross of Set. It is an image of death because the water of purification is the blood that negates life and manifestation while at the same time affirming it in the abyss while at the same time affirming it in the abyss where the blood is sucked in 
as a drink offering in the rite of the infernal ninth degree. C note, sucked in, I-N-Q, sucked, 160. Interesting. The five-rayed crown is the circle or cycle of the five kalas, typical of the feminine phase of negation, the lunar period that eclipses life in the form of MPLI, which means literally flakes of flesh. The symbol of Penti, five, P-E-N-T-E, and of the pentagram as the seal or star of Nuit, not, has been explained in the magical revival. See note for MPLI, this word also adds to 160, who would have thought? <laughs> the animals prowling in the shadows of this tunnel include the wolf and, as Crowley notes, Apropos, the 24th path. The hound as a kind of wolf also pertains here. 777. This is the hound Cerberus who guards the abyss. He is the great beast of hell, not of Tifereth without, but Tifereth within. Meaning the infernal sun and in Amenta, the phallus and anus. C note, unnatural congress, <laughs> as distinct from the supernal sun, or the ordinary ninth degree formula. Also ascribed to this 24th kala are the scorpion and the beetle, both symbols of the dark sun. The typical disease connected with path 24 is cancer, which links up with the beetle symbolism which preceded that of the crab as the sign of the midnight sun. Makes sense. The transverser of the backward path in the Wittershins world of the abyss. Remember, or I guess learn, <laughs> that dung beetles would walk backward. They would push and walk backward, um, rolling the dung, which looked like a sphere, a black, dark sphere. Beautiful. Okay. The god forms appropriate are Typhon, Apep, Kepra, the Merti goddesses, and Sechet the sun of sexual heat, the savage sun in the south, as opposed to the great cat-headed goddess Bast, the gentle mother of the north. The Book of Thoth, A213, in the Book of Thoth, A213, is attributed to this ray, and is the title, and its title is The Lord of the Gate of Death. In the Zoskia Cultus, Austin Ospar, the adept in this tunnel, assumes the death posture and becomes one with cosmic consciousness by a retroversion of the senses. The tantric adept, or adept, <laughs> the tantric adept achieves a similar result by the formula of viparita, V-I-P-A-R-I-T-A, -A. viparita is probably viparita, anyway, described in the Typhonian trilogy. This formula links up with the Mystery du zombieisme. It's French. I'm not even going to try. Sure, I will. Mystère, mystère du zombieisme. <laughs> In the cult of the black snake. See note. La couleuvre noire. Its present chief is Michael Bertio. See cults of the shadow. La culte noire. Hmm. Uh, L a c o u l e. U V R E Noir. Oh, la coulve, coulève. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> gotta love French. This formula links up with the mystery of zombieism in the cult of the black snake. And the magical power ascribed to this mystery is necromancy, which comports the use of the ninth degree. Necrophilia also belongs here as that aspect of meditation on dissolution that leads the adept to the portal of the ultimate mystery of non-being. Okay, so just because we talk about something on this channel doesn't mean that I necessarily approve of it or partake in it. This channel is about information and wisdom, and there is information out there that some of you will agree with, and there is information out there that some of you won't, but you will not know until you receive it. You're welcome. <laughs> All right. 
the specifically sexual nature of the formula is made apparent to in the attribution to this tunnel of the energies of Scorpio, which rule the genital chakras. In a marginal note in his personal copy of Lever 777, is there a citation for this? Okay, well, I'm just going to assume that this person's telling the truth, right? <laughs> um, in a marginal note in his personal copy of Libra 777, Crowley wrote, In the new Aeon, Scorpio is the woman serpent. This means that the initiator of the adept is hidden in the image of death with a five-rayed crown. The symbolism of which has already been explained in connection with the feminine number five. In the African pantheon, the goddess of the rainbow, Aidowedo, Aidowedo, A-I-D-O-W-E-D-O, pertains to this current. Here, however, the bow is not manifest, but latent in the depth of the abyss. The opposite and fructive formula is that of the 11th degree, where the rainbow appears in its full splendor in the heaven of Nu. But here, in the hell of Hecate, all is dark. You can say Hecate, you can say Hecate, you can say Hecate, whatever the fuck you want to say. In the hell of Hecate, all is dark, and the serpent Dangbe, the black snake, leaves in its wake a trail of slime that indicates the presence of the Necheshteron. Necheshteron. Nechash is serpent, so this is some sort of tribe of snakes, I'm assuming. Necheshteron, the brazen serpents <laughs> that haunt the tunnel of Neontiel. Of the six basic points which pertain to the dot 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 tubes and tunnels of the astral and mental matter, Michael Bertial cites as the fifth as the fifth, the Mystère du Zombiesme, which indicates with this tunnel of Neantiel. He describes this mystery as the magic of the Black Temple of Atlantis and its first form, dot, dot, dot. Is that an ellipsis? Is that what that's called? The magician works directly with the dead, especially through their astral shells and forms. Are you paying attention? Okay, good. <laughs> of black temple work, he says that it was concerned with death and certain cult of death rites in both esoteric voodoo and tantra come from this tradition. See note, Michael Bertial, Monastery of the Seven Rays, grade paper of the fourth year course. All right. The Black Temple work of Atlantis, related to the mysteries of the dead, as the Red Temple, work related to those of sexual magic. Both varieties linger on into the present cycle of the human life wave. They were condemned as black magic by the old Aeon cult of Osiris. Since the mysteries of death concern the 24th Kala, it is necessary to understand the kind of magic practiced by the Atlanteans of the Black Temple. It is well known to occultists that at the moment of sexual orgasm, the adept is able to launch a creative thought construct which penetrates the astral envelope of his psyche. Well known, folks. And it reifies in matter at a time appointed by the magician. I'm going to read that again because some of you may not have thought about it this way. It is well known to occultists that at the moment of sexual orgasm, the adept is able to launch, not flutter out, launch, a creative, not receptive, a creative, not a, so many words come to mind. These words are very important because this is all programming. Launch a creative thought construct which penetrates the astral envelope of his psyche and reifies in matter 
at a time appointed by the magician. It's interesting that he uses the word reify. The word king is related to completion and connection via its ng suffix. Is that what it's called, a suffix? Anyway, so it's interesting that he uses the word reify, but I, I think he's essentially saying it will, it will manifest. But it's not just a manifestation. It's, it's a crowning. It's, a, it's, a, it's, it's an achievement. Okay, moving on. A similar mechanism operates at the moment of death. When the soul quits its earthly vehicle, the adept of the death cult can direct it into any given location. Black magicians could by this means capture the soul of an individual and make it subservient to his will, allegedly. This is the method, and I'm not, I'm, okay, so, <laughs> allegedly, I'm sure there are has been at times people who could do that to certain people but when it's stated this way it makes it seem like just anyone can be subjugated at any time by anyone with the know-how it, it's i don't want to say it's not that easy but it's not that fucking easy to just capture a soul at its moment of death we we need to run a razor through this stuff and not just accept it for what it is and if we do accept it, realize that it's, some of the stuff is pretty rare, folks. Like, not anyone can, can do the stuff that we're talking about. Okay. This is the method of creating zombies. But the original Atlantean version of the sorcery involved elements of sexual magic. A consecrated priestess was slain in a special manner, and the adept copulated with her shade to produce a zombie on the astral plane. And there's another example. It's not always physical. This was also, if required, incarnated via a living woman through the natural process of birth. The zombie produced in this way was not a soulless mechanism, as in the case of a zombie produced by Haitian voodoo, but a highly intelligent thought... What is that? But a highly intelligent though automatic entity combining the vividness and plasticity of astral consciousness with the magical qualities of the adept himself interesting it was literally a child of the dead yet equipped with magical powers and with all the faculties of humanity except that of the will bertiao correctly observes Voodoo and witchcraft came from the same mystical parent, i.e. the old religions of Atlantis. See note. See previous note. <laughs> Michael Bertia, Monastery of the Seven Rays. The zombie just described was a true familiar spirit. The god form assumed by the adept at the moment of death or orgasm determined the form, human or animal, of the familiar spirit. The Atlantean zombie is the result of the adept retaining his human shape at the climax of the ritual. The witches of more recent aeons disguised their familiars as animals, yet even so, they became suspect in the eyes of non-initiates. The Atlantean time, in Atlantean times, the process did not carry the moral opprobrium. Opprobrium? I've never... Uh, hmm. O-P-P-R-O-B-R-I-U-M. Opprobrium. Is later gained. The necromancy of the Black Brothers, on the other hand, consisted of physical contact with the dead, and many adepts of the death cult became addicted to necrophilia. The practice involved sexual congress with a ritually slain woman dedicated to the deity with whom contact was sought. An Asiatic sect of necromancers sequestered specially selected virgins for post-mortem traffic with the gods. Sexual congress occurred shortly after death. The shade of the virgin was extracted by a method known as the vampire vortex. Interesting. And, and propelled into an intermediary dimension between terrestrial and post-mortem consciousness. At this stage, the spirit is still partially earthed. Sexual stimulus was, was again applied to arouse to a maximum pitch of sensitivity the astral spirit of the priestess 
which was thereby energized and awakened from the post-mortem torpor and able to receive and transmit the subtlest impressions reflected in the astral ethers. The woman's body appeared to leap like a frog as her limbs twitched convulsively at each impact of the sexual onslaught. Yeah, in some context, onslaught might be the appropriate term there. Uh, this throws further light on the frog totem and the reason for its assignment to the Lady of the Tomb and certain dark cults hinted at in grimoires of Asiatic sorcery. So one important thing to note is that these priestesses were seemingly willing uh, to partake in this act. Now, the question is, were these priests, priestesses raised from childbirth for this? Were they, were they raised to believe that this was their purpose? Um, that being said, does it make it their purpose? This is sketchy shit, folks. I'm just here to raise questions, not necessarily answer them. <laughs> But I will answer what I can when I can. All right, moving on. Such may have been the source of H.P. Lovecraft's references to the abominable plateau of Leng, L-E-N-G, which, in his tales, is associated in Central Asia. However, this may be. There is no doubt that the frog was a magical symbol connected not only with the voltigures or leapers of the paths, but also with the mortuary rites that caused the body of the dead priestess to simulate saltant and batrachian convulsions. Passing from Lovecraft's fictions to Robert Temple's book, The Serious Mystery, S-I-R-I-U-S, and speaking of Proclus, the Temple observes that he had a particular connection with rites involving Hecate, the goddess whom we know to be a form of the star Sirius. Hecate, remember Hecate is typically shown, shown with a dog or dogs or wolves. Sirius is the dog star. That's why people howl. Um, was it, is it Lamas? I'm, I'm not, I don't really consider myself pagan or anything, but whatever the August rituals are, as the dog star is rising, people will beat drums and howl and summon their Ishma Nefesh, etc. I digress. I apologize. Okay. Hecate was the Greek form of the Egyptian Hecate, or ur -Hekau. Or Heka. It's U-R hyphen H-E-K-A-U. The great magic power ascribed to the lunar current. The temple further observes that the name of the Greek goddess Hecate literally means in Greek 100. See note, the serious mystery. This is the number of the letter Koph, which is ascribed to the moon. And Koph means back of the head. Also, I believe Koph is how you say monkey. So there's an interesting thing there about monkeys in the moon. Anyway, see, uh, Kof means back of the head, and this is where the creative or reproductive force is primarily situated. This is one of the reasons that I love the spelling for Kabbalah or Kabbalah as Kof Betlamed, because <laughs> roughly translated, people are going to say that I'm wrong about this, but this is just a translation. If Lamed is a goad or a lasso, it represents a sense of control or will, perhaps. And if bait means house or is a lodging. And kof is the back of the head. Isn't Kabbalah the control housed in the back of the head? There's other ways to interpret it, but it, that's one of the ways. Um, and if we spell it in its original spelling as chaf bet lamed, it's the control housed in in the open hand, in the palm. It's, it's, it, Kabbalah means to receive. It, it's a tradition. So that's, that's an interesting digression. <laughs> Moving on. Okay. 
Furthermore, Temple states that the African tribe known as the Dogon claim the amphibious creatures with fish tails founded their civilization, dot, 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 and they came from the system of the star Sirius. See note, uh, the Sirius mystery, page 207. In other words, there is a subtle connection between Hecate, the frog, an amphibious creature, Sirius, the moon, and sexuality. It would be beyond the scope of this section to pursue the subject, but it may be noted that the Atlantean forms of magic involved in the production of zombies were no less than the black perversions of the death cultists, probably connected with the formula of the Voltigures, and were aimed at incarnating extraterrestrial entities such as those mentioned by Temple. Fair enough. This highly complex 24th Kala comports therefore various kinds of sexual magic. For the sake of convenience, they may be subsumed beneath the ninth degree OTO. The elements involved are all related to the backward path of the sun and Amenta, to the formula of Scorpio, purification via putrefaction, good word, or to the necromantic and necrophiliac sorcery associated with the mystère du zombisme and the cult of the dead, and to the retention of the sun seed in the practice of Kareza. It is therefore not surprising that to the path of which Neontiel's cell is the tunnel are attributed Lamie, L-A-M-I-A-E, Sturges, and Witches. Very good. Now, check this out. Sex doesn't always mean sex. So, you can absolutely take these mysteries all the way down to Earth. You can absolutely take this knowledge and use it with your meat, brain, animal, mind, flesh, body. And it will produce results. And it might not just produce physical, fleshly, animal results. It might produce results. It might bounce and echo all the way back up. But I want to challenge you to also try to apply these sexual methods in other fields, in other worlds, in other planes. Sex takes place in the mind. Sex takes place in the energy field because sex is nothing more than a connection of positive and negative forces or projective and receptive. It's not nothing more than that, but that is at the heart of what sex is. So don't let one idea destroy a foundation. Sex is able to be pursued and more than just a carnal fleshly manner but as i said you can also pursue it as that as well just don't don't limit yourself folks don't limit yourself don't limit yourself to the left hand path don't limit yourself to the right hand path don't limit yourself to the middle path don't limit yourself moderation in all things including moderation all right moving on To the Shadow Tarot by Linda Felorio. Neon Tiel, the Shadow of Death. As Eros draws life from Thanatos, and merging with dark Plutonian energies, we find transformation, regeneration, energy, sexual power, exaltation, joy, bliss. I'll show the uh, image here again. Okay. Magical images gaily dance the dance of death and the night side tunnel of Neon Tiel, reminding us of plague parties as seen in the movie Nosferatu. Nosferatu? Where plague victims spend their last remaining days as guests at endless banquets laid out at trestle tables and streets through which wagons rumbled, overflowing to foul charnel houses. Yet they laughed and wore flowers in their hair. Hmm. Why not? In Neontiel, death is no gaunt, robed skeleton with a scythe. 
But the Joker, the jester crowned with the draw three-cornered cap and bells, upon his dancing toes, he is Baron Semedi, Legba, guardian of the crossroads between the worlds, the place where witches meet, where the dead are buried, and from whence the, they may be constrained to rise through necromantic arts. Via Niantiel, Eros draws light from Thanatos. The water of purification has stagnated and putrefied. Strange, wholesome life forms grow and feed upon the slime. And it is Halloween, day of masks, eve of the day of the dead, depicted in the east. A lion with a dog's head and a man's holds aloft an icon. A lion with a dog and man's head holds aloft an icon, which is a woman's severed head, half a death's head. The left hand waves and the brazen serpent of the worshippers of the dark gods, servants of the ruthless feminine, Lilith Kali Mars, giver of life, bringer of death, whimsical first arbiter, to be appeased by blood sacrifice monthly at the dark of the moon with the blood of nascent life. A nocturnal, wolf's, a nocturnal wolf laps greedily at the gushing blood. In the west is a creature suggestive of the amphibious gods with fish's tails that came from the star Sirius and founded the Dogon civilization. In the south is a golden angel, a type of Lilith, whose goose feet and cat's head with a rainbow plumes and cape. With rainbow plumes and cape. While in the north, presiding over all floats, Akrabu, A-K-R-A-B-U, the Sumerian demon, known as Scorpion Man, Akrabu, probably, delighting in the savage dance of the masks of death and life. In Neon Tiel is found black temple work of Atlantean magics, devolved into death cults, which survive into the present time. Indeed. In Neontiel are cults of magical cannibalism, shrunken heads, and necrophilia with souls newly released by death for the creation of astral zombies. You know, I actually saw a shrunken head one time. It's really, actually, it was, a, it was a cluster of them. Very interesting. Moving on. In Neontiel, we find AIDS assassins, A-I-D-S, whose ecstasy at the moment of orgasm is thought by their silent private knowledge of transmission of their death. That's fucking wild, bro. Death of leaders, death of martyrs, death of saints. That's fucking wild, bro. Man. <laughs> life. Offering escape from life through eternal living death which poses as the promise of life after death, the ultimate reason for being. Neontiel Meditation Powers of Neontiel are reincarnation and conscious acceptance of the lover's embrace of death. Yet death is but one curve of the serpent death and life. Death is the feminine. There is life in putrefaction. Energy released through, the breaking, energy released through breaking the bonds of life. That's interesting because I believe there is a when the sperm permeates the egg and the veil is rent, I believe there is a flash of light. Just like underwater, when you pop a bubble, there's a thing called somnamb... Is it somnamb... No. Sonoluminescence. Where I <laughs> said somnambulance, that's sleepwalking. Sonoluminescence, where you pop a bubble and the vibration generates energy at a certain depth that it creates light. And that relates to Ohas to some degree. So look into that if you choose. Bindu, Ohas relationship. Niantiel meditation. Powers of Niantiel are reincarnation and conscious and conscious acceptance of the love's, lover's embrace of death. I'm going to read that over. Powers of Niantiel are reincarnation and conscious acceptance of of the lover's embrace of death. Yet, death is but one curve of the serpent death and life. 
Death is the feminine. There is life and putrefaction. Energy released to the breaking bonds of life. Nuclear energy mutates DNA to create new forms of anti-life. Creates deadly orgone radiation. Oranor, oranur, O-A-O-R-A-N-U-R. Devitalizes bions. Hmm. Prolifer proliferates cellular structure into cancers. Disorganizes ego structure into schizophrenia. And Nianti L is acceptance of the universe as Thanatos and Eros. Thanateros, eh? The ability to merge with dark Plutonian energies for transformation and regeneration, yielding personal magnetism, inexhaustible energy, sexual power, exaltation, joy, bliss. Need to work with Niantiel is suggested when we find fascination with or fear of death, old age, illness, infirmity, decay, and corruption. And Niantiel is obsession with youth, newness, perfection, immortality, with objects of human manufacture that appear to defy the laws of entropy. There is discomfort with rawness, wildness, and with the savageness of the natural world accompanied by abhorrence of natural cycles of change and squeamishness at the bare facts of animal nature and earthly existence. And Neontiel is existential fear in the face of our ultimate aloneness as we gaze into the naked void. Moving on. Two tunnels upset by Senath Mason. Senath. Alrighty. <clears throat> Gaze at the sigil, and chant or vibrate the name of the guardian. Visualizing the image comes alive, and begins to move and grow until you see it spreading before you like a landscape you can't enter. Clouds of black and purple smoke emerge from the image, following into the ritual space and developing around you. They carry a stench of death and putrefaction, attuning your senses to the energies of the guardian and preparing you for the journey into the depths of the tunnel. When you get to this point, extinguish the candles, close your eyes, and with the image building up in your inner mind, send a message to the guardian to guide you through the experience. Visualize that for a moment everything fades away and the whole world disappears. Then the darkness around you crystallizes into a scene. You are in a labyrinth of dark corridors. The air carries the smell of decay and putrefaction, as if you were in an old abandoned house. There are old household objects all around you, all covered with dust and cobwebs, pictures of dead people hanging on the walls that seem to be observing you in your every move. Old ornamented sconces cast dim purple light. The whole atmosphere is ominous and menacing. You are there alone but you sense a presence nearby. Although you cannot see anyone, all you can hear is muttered whispering and laughter that seem to come from behind the walls. Finally, the corridor ends and you enter a big, round-shaped room. There are purple curtains hanging around, covering the walls, and in the center, there is a black coffin placed on a catafalque, C-A-T-A-F-A-L-Q-U-E, on a catafalque, Surrounded by candelabras, or candelabras, <laughs> surrounded by candelabras with burning candles. It all looks fake, artificial, as if it was staged scenery in a theater or circus. As you approach, you notice that the person lying in the coffin is wrapped in a shroud and has a mask of a jester on the face. You lift the mask and you realize that the face it covers is yours. Your eyes are closed, your skin is ghastly pale, and your lips are black and rotten. Suddenly the corpse is in, suddenly the corpse in the coffin moves, grabs you with its hands, and pulls you into the coffin to take its place. You are now wrapped in the shroud yourself, and your face is covered with the mask of the jester, the guardian of the tunnel. At the same moment, your mind is flooded with the thoughts of death and all that you associate with it. 
be it fear, anxiety, or fascination. You rise from the coffin, and at the same time the curtains fall from the walls, and you see lots of mirrors around you. These mirrors show the reflection of all of your thoughts, fears, nightmares, obsessions, and desires. In each of them, you see a different reflection of yourself, beautiful and ugly, healthy and sick, powerful and grotesque. All of these images are there and all speak to you and laugh at you, as if they were separate beings in their own right. You need to confront and absorb each one. This is the ordeal of the tunnel. It might take a while, so let this meditation flow in a natural way and do not try to speed up anything. When the experience is over, you should feel that you have that you you should feel that all you have faced, all your fears, weaknesses and desires do not matter anymore. As you are now free and unbound, ready to move forward on your path. This should be a liberating and empowering feeling. Open yourself to this experience, and when it is over, travel back to your body. Close the working and return to your normal consciousness. All right, that'll do it. If you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, leave them below. If you have any suggestions, feel free to suggest. Otherwise, have a great rest of the day, great rest of the week, and yeah, take care. <laughs>